I'm Owen from Bite Size Irish Gaelic. Welcome to episode 17, Iver e Shachjeog, of the Bite Size Irish Gaelic podcast. Even if you're alone learning to speak Irish outside of Ireland, don't despair. Rest assured that there are thousands like you across the globe, all interested in tapping into Ireland's native culture. For all about this podcast, please come to visit us at www.bitesizeirishgaelic.com slash podcast. In this episode, I'm going to have a bit of fun. (laughs) I'm going to address some listener questions and some emails that we got in over the past couple of weeks. And I'm going to address a really interesting forum topic on Irish language forum on whether I am a native Irish speaker. Or am I just an imposter? So as always, I love hearing from you. Um, my direct email is podcast at bitesizeirishgaelic.com and you can email me at that. Actually, that inbox, that email inbox was bouncing emails for a week or two. So apologies if you did write and you got a message or an error back. But that address definitely does still work now. In Ireland now, our clocks have just changed. We're at the very end of March as I'm recording this. There is a bit of sunlight. It's half past nine in the evening and there's still a little bit of light in the sky. I love this time of year. All the way into mid-June when we get light in the sky. Um, Basically to midnight, you can see some light in the sky. And in the middle of summer, we really don't get many hours of darkness. It's really getting bright very, very early in the morning, like 3 a.m. So I really love this. We're getting there are leaves growing on the trees. There are flowers out. The daffodils have been out for a couple of weeks. There's a little bit of, I was going to say heat, but a bit of warmth in the air. So we're really loving this. If you're a listener to this podcast before, you'll have heard me talk about Limerick, where we're based, Limerick City in Ireland. And uh, Limerick City had a good deal of flooding in this past winter time. The River Shannon, which flows through the city, was at record level highs, really, and along the estuary, along the coastline. The sea was just pouring in over a wall, which it hadn't done before. So dangerous times, but um, people got through it. And hopefully now we're in for a little bit of sunshine and a bit of summer rain. Sure, why not? Where would we be without a bit of summer Irish rain? So if you're visiting Ireland in 2014, I'd love to hear from you. Just tell me what your plans are, where you plan to visit, and if you have any questions, by all means, send them in. I was looking at iTunes. We didn't get many reviews lately. Um, I'm trying to think. It was a couple of weeks ago since we got our last five-star written review. But just to say thanks, just the US page alone, we have 13 ratings and all seem to be five-star. Well, so the podcast is five-star rated, so thanks a lot for that. I am going to jump straight into some listener comments and listener questions and emails that we've received. Lottie Watson left a comment on one of the show notes. We have show notes for every show of the Bite Size Irish Gaelic podcast. Lottie said, enjoyed this podcast, but I get it on my laptop, so I can't give it all five stars that I want to. So Lottie is saying that uh, she doesn't use iTunes to listen to the podcast and it's really only on iTunes where we accept those <laughs> written five star reviews. As uh, she says, Gurv Mahagots for taking the time to do these. Is Owen John in Gaelic? Lemas regards Lottie. Lottie, yep, my name E O I N, Owen. It's the biblical form of John in the Bible. So where you get John or Saint John in the English language Bible, you'll generally get Owen in the Irish language version. As far as I know, uh, this is a modernized version. There would have been other spellings along the way, but it does come from a a Latin language base, from what I understand. We have some excellent uh, listener comments and questions on episode 15, where I spoke to Brian Casey. If you haven't listened to it, please do. Brian is an American and he chose to move to Ireland and he did. (laughs) And it didn't take him that long to decide that. And it was really a treat to hear how he had planned it out and what his impressions were after moving to Ireland. 
So uh, there were a lot of questions about like visas, how to get work, um, how to apply for jobs if you're not living in Ireland, practical questions like that. I hear from a lot of people through the year, people who want to move to Ireland. And I know it's a huge thing, like moving yourself to another country, but a lot of people dream to do so. And if you really want to do so, you have to take some action, I guess. Don't just sell and leave everything that you own right now, but take steps towards that to moving to Ireland. So even if you've only dreamed of moving to Ireland, I suggest that you come to bitesizeirishgaelic.com forward slash podcast and find episode 15. I got an interesting uh, podcast suggestion from Nathaniel Muncy and I emailed him back. So Nathaniel said, I've wanted to listen to your podcasts. However, since I'm deaf, I can't understand them. Is there a possibility that you would be willing to upload transcripts of your podcasts that would allow deaf and hard of hearing people who desire to learn Irish to benefit from all this website has to offer? Regards, Nathaniel Muncy. Nathaniel, as I said to him in the email, much appreciate the question. It's not in our immediate plans to provide transcripts of the podcast. Now, if there's a bit of demand, we'll see what we can do. But it's really a a ratio between how much time it takes to get that done um, every two weeks and how many people can get value from it. So if there's some demand for transcripts, just let us know either by podcast at bitesizeirishgaelic.com or on the show notes page. You can just leave a comment. I got a lovely email from James Thorne. He signed himself as Seamus of Thorne Books. And James is in the business, from what I can tell, of the trade of quite special books and memorabilia. And in his PS, Seamus said, Why is there no father? That's the accent mark over the O in your name. So E-O-I-N. James is asking, why isn't it E? O with an accent mark, O father, I N. FYI, my name was properly O Hoan before the English got to it. Okay, well, Seamus, Hamish, I will link C up to our uh, bite size lesson about pronouncing long vowels part two, vowel groupings. Well, how this works is there's a rule in Irish where the letters E and O, when they come together, they already make the O sound. And that's pretty much what the letter O with the accent mark makes, O. If O is just on its own, it's much shorter and softer. It's like, O. So to answer the question, there's no need for the fada from what I've been told in the past, because the E and O just work together already. Uh, You can treat them as a fada already almost. So James, thanks a lot, and it's easy to type my name, right? It's just E-O-I-N, a lot of vowels. Right, another James wrote in, and James said, Owen, I would like to read the time. And James, okay, so <laughs> James didn't ask much there, but there's this illustrated book about on time, and it's an old mythical story um, from the land of Ireland, and there's a beautiful book beautifully illustrated book for sale with Irish language dialogue in the book and if you're interested you go to litriacht.com now that's spelled out l-i-t-r-i-o-c-h-t dot com and don't worry I'll put a link to that pretty much uh, litriacht.com is a huge online Irish language bookshop so if you're looking for a book on sale I suggest you look there first they could do with putting up more information about specific books, but hey, I'm not complaining. Moving quickly on, I received an email question from a member of Bite Size Irish Gaelic, Jane Myers, and she asked, I want a hard copy English-Irish dictionary with phonetic pronunciations. Could you help me? So Jane, as far as I know, I don't know of an English-Irish dictionary, so going from the direction of English to Irish, with phonetic pronunciations in a modern print. There is the Valdraha in paperback. What I'm going to do is link you up to our dictionaries post on Bite Size Irish Gaelic. I think there might be a paperback and 
perhaps a hardback copy there, but take a look at our page there. The dictionaries page is really where we point everybody towards our recommendations for learners who want to speak Irish and who have really uh, dug in and st- really started to learn Irish. They found that they needed a dictionary beside them. And in that same post, there's a bonus couple of links to online dictionaries that you can use. I got a nice email from Katie Key on the 20th of March and she said, I have enjoyed looking through the lessons. I am 78 and have been Ireland twice. I'll be coming back next year and was hoping to be able to converse somewhat in Irish Gaelic. It's very hard for me and I saw that the last 10 lessons from number 145 were not written out as before. So what Katie was saying, what I figured out was we have phonetic pronunciations in our online bite-size lessons in our online course and as Audrey said before in this podcast as you learn hopefully you won't rely on phonetic pronunciations so that's like taking we've taken the Irish language words and written them out as if they're English language words as closely as possible now it's far from ideal but it means first of all you don't have to learn the special IPA Uh, pronunciation guide which is perfect in its own right but you have to have the interest to use the IPA guide and second of all what Katie found out was we hadn't filled in the phonetic pronunciations in the last lessons that we added um, the most recent lessons that we've added to Bite Size Irish Gaelic so we have recordings in the lessons in the Bite Size lessons but we didn't have phonetic pronunciations written out And Katie really points to, it's a feature, these phonetic pronunciation guides are a really sought after feature in Bite Size Irish Gaelic. I thank you for her feedback. We're going back right now, we're in the process of going back and entering phonetic pronunciations for all about 3,000 recordings in Bite Size Irish Gaelic. If you want to take a trial of Bite Size Irish Gaelic, you can do so completely free. Right now, we don't ask for a credit card up front. So you can open an account, you just choose your uh, password and you give your email address. There's no other obligation. You log in instantly and you have about two or three weeks to use up your free trial. And you have full access to the entire Bite Size Irish Gaelic course during your trial membership. I received an email question from Nora Hammond and she said, Hi Owen. I'm from the north of Ireland. Does much of the language pronunciation vary? I remember the basics. Thanks, Nora. It sounds like Nora grew up with a little bit of Irish when she was younger in the north of Ireland. I'm not sure from what she says whether she's still based there. It'd be interesting to know that. But pretty much, yeah, Irish language dialects, there are three main ones. One being Ulster, which generally uh, covers the northern bit of Ireland, including the north of Ireland. So there's Ulster dialect, then there's the Connacht or Connemara dialect along the west in Galway and Mayo. And we get to the Munster dialect, which is along the south of Ireland, which broadly covers Kerry and Cork, with a bit of Waterford thrown in as well. To answer your question about Irish dialects, yeah, they, they do vary. What we say to learners is uh, be aware of them, but don't be afraid of them. Learn whatever you can now and you can always specialise in a dialect later. That's the stance we take. Ulster Irish, it does have its own accent for sure. And not only accent, it would have its own special phrases in certain circumstances, even variations to how the grammar works in the specific details. So in the show notes, I'm going to link you up to the our Irish dialects page. You can see a video that I've recorded about Irish dialects, so you can get more information there. And another related question about Irish versus Gaelic. I got a question in from David Parkey, and David said, The question I have is, after I learn Irish, and I speak it toward a Scotsman, will he understand it, even though it is a different dialect? Kind of like if I speak German to a Dutch speaker or Ukrainian to a Russian. Right, David, the first thing I'll say is we have a 10 minute really popular video on YouTube. You just search Irish versus Gaelic and you'll see that video that I recorded. I'll link it up in the show notes as well. 
Pretty much it depends on the speaker, but Scottish Gaelic is treated as its own language, as a distinct language from Irish and vice versa. If I hear a Scotsman speaking Gaelic or Scottish Gaelic, I won't really understand him. But the languages are really close because historically they were pretty much the same language. It was just a gradient of accent changing from village to village and then across the water from the tip of Northern Ireland across to Scotland and up along Scotland. So today modern Gaelic in Scotland is different and I, for example, would not instantly understand a Scotsman speaking Gaelic. Although if I studied it a bit, I'm sure that I'd pick up a lot of the sense. I'm not sure about German and Dutch. They're quite different already, right? I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Dutchmen won't really want me <laughs> to say that, but there are. Ukrainian and Russian, I don't know how similar those are together. But certainly there are Slavic languages that are very similar to each other that would be along the same lines of Irish and Scottish Gaelics. Or, for example, maybe a Norwegian speaker and a Swedish speaker, from what I've kind of seen. I've seen a Norwegian person speaking Norwegian to a Swedish person, and the Swedish person just speaking back in Swedish, and they're both understanding each other. It's not that easy in Irish and Gaelic, so choose which of those languages you want to cover. At Bite Size Irish Gaelic, we covered the Irish side of of Gaelic, so the language that's spoken on the island of Ireland. And if you have heritage from more Scottish side, maybe you'd be better off um, finding a resource for specifically Scottish Gaelic. I got a lovely question in from Elizabeth Sanford. She says, hello Owen, I would like to get your advice on some places to visit during my visit to Ireland in the next couple of years. I am starting to make plans now because there are so many beautiful places that I have heard of and I want to see them all, but I will only be there for a short time. That's, Elizabeth, that's good already that you're planning that. I would like your recommendations for places for a first time visit to give me an idea for what to plan for. I love learning everything about my Irish heritage. So three things, Elizabeth, and I'm going to link see all of these from the show notes. First of all, in podcast episode three, so going back to podcast episode three, I spoke with Jody of Ireland Family Travel. We covered uh, some surprises you might get when you come to visit in Ireland, but we also talked about some of our favorite top spots in Ireland. So give that a listen. There is a fantastic resource that Corey over at irishfireside.com has released and it's called Remarkable Places in Ireland. It's an ebook in PDF format from what I've seen and you go to irishfireside.com forward slash remarkable and Corey's done such a fantastic job. I can't recommend it enough that you go and download his ebook. While I'm at it, you should download our ebook that we published recently. It's The Irish Language, Your Key to Gaelic Ireland. And if these questions that I've covered so far in the podcast are of interest to you, you should really uh, have a read of this ebook. And I'm going to put a link see in the show notes. Thirdly, for Elizabeth, my last suggestion is anywhere along the western coastline. Like people say that Dublin is a must visit. Okay, well, I, I don't know if I agree with that, but feel free to go to Dublin for sure. And after that, uh, visit along the western coastline. So we're talking counties Kerry and Cork, my favourite spots in Ireland. County Clare, where there's Doolin and La Hinch, some beautiful local traditional music. You go up to Galway City, up through Connemara, some breathtaking landscapes through the Gaeltacht region in Connemara, where the locals speak Irish, up to County Mayo, through, say, Leitrim and Sligo, and up to Donegal, which is, you know, that's quite a trip already. If you get to Donegal, it's quite a, a trip to get back to Dublin. So it depends on how many days you've got. But if you're looking for a general guide, you just can't go wrong with going along the west coast of Ireland. 
Now I'm going to cover this um, Irish language forum.com thread that's been floating around I think for uh, the last year or two already. It's had 1500 views and at time of, of speaking 42 replies. So it's really somebody posted about Bite Size Irish Gaelic and asking for others feedback about it. And there's been a bit of controversy there, I say. I, I also got a couple of emails about this, about people pointing me towards the thread. And I thought, hey, like, I don't want to hide this from you. I want to point you towards this thread, actually. I want you to go and read the thread if you have the interest. So Brendan, lovely guy. I've dealt with him online uh, pretty much. He lives in Australia. He's from Australia. And I'll jump in. Brendan says... Owen claims to be a native speaker, but he has school Irish accent. His accent has been improving over the years, and he should describe himself truthfully and honestly as a fluent speaker rather than as a native speaker. Okay, well, Brendan, <laughs> thanks for calling me a fluent speaker, and I already take that as a compliment. Now, I'm picking and choosing what I find to be the important bits of the thread. To read the full thread, I'm going to link you up to it so that you get the full context. Brendan says, just so that people who actually want to study Munster or Kerry Irish aren't misled, Bite Size Irish Gaelic is not really Munster Irish. It is more like school Irish in both grammar and pronunciation. Native speakers of Irish use traditional Irish phonemes. Phonemes. Okay, that's not really a word that I'm very familiar with. I'm really sorry to say. Creole speakers use anglicized phonemes. You cannot become a native Irish speaker if Irish is the Irish speaking household is Creole. Unless at least one person is aware of and uses the traditional phonemes, you will at best become a speaker of the Creole, not of Irish. Whatever his background, the fact is that Owen doesn't have a native accent. It is very much a second language accent. I think Owen's approach and formatting are fantastic. Small chunks are great. Thanks, Bernon. Kermagot. However, his sample pool of speakers is way too small. <laughs> At the moment, it is one. He should employ a larger range of speakers, preferably native Gaeltacht speakers, to improve the quality and breadth of his recordings. <laughs> so what Brendan is saying is, Brendan doesn't uh, treat me as a native speaker of Irish. I grew up in Ennis in County Clare, Ennis Town, Ballyan, Nahinche, and Ennis Town is not in the Gaeltacht region, so most people around me were speaking English when I was growing up. At home, we spoke Irish, so my first language was the Irish language, and we didn't speak English at home with my parents. By the time I got to school, I think I had some exposure to English, especially through my grandmother and through people visiting the house and stuff. So I never remember not being able to speak English. My mother tells me that it's really something we just picked up along the way through dealing with people coming into the house. But at home, how I learned to express myself, how I learned to like demand food and demand to go outside and things that little baby Liam does to us now. <laughs> All that was through the Irish language. I'll freely admit that I don't have a perfect Gaeltacht accent and probably far from it. So the accent I grew up with, yes, it was influenced by the English language of how to say things, right? Now, am I a native speaker of Irish or am I like a second degree speaker somehow of Irish language. The Irish language is my first language. It's my native language. You cannot take that away from me. <laughs> it's as simple as that, right? So uh, to say anything else is just wrong. At home, we weren't brought up with a perfect a Gaeltacht Irish. For example, if you lived in a certain village in County Kerry and you were lucky enough to grow up in the Gaeltacht, you'd have a certain strong, nice, traditional accent in the Irish language. That's something that I didn't have so much growing up. So over the years, I've also paid attention to my accent in Irish and to see how I pronounce it compared to how maybe a person in another region would have spoken it. When you come to Bite Size Irish Gaelic, what our approach is that you should learn Irish 
and not bother yourself right now with Irish dialects unless you want to focus on a certain dialect right now. The reason is I have dealt with so many people who just give up on learning Irish because they see that there are different dialects in Irish and that stops them. They first of all can't choose a dialect and second of all if they choose a dialect they complain that they don't find enough resources in that one specific dialect. So what we say is please don't get caught up in this. Just learn Irish either through Bite Size Irish Gaelic or Rosetta Stone or free lessons on aaronsweb.com just for example. So to give you another flavour from this same forum thread, Breed Vore, who I've spoken to before, I've met her a couple of times and she's a native on, of An Rua in Connemara. So she grew up in the Gweldacht and she said, if Owen's first language is acquired Irish, then technically, linguistically, he is a native Irish speaker. But that doesn't mean he speaks the traditional Irish of Munster. Anyways, fair play to him for teaching Irish and making a living out of it. Okay, but I don't make a living out of it. I work full time as well, but that's another story. Bite Size sounds like a very good project. I'm sure in time he will expand it. All right, there was another comment from We Fallery Man. It was about, we were talking about on the thread, about specializing in a dialect later. And one thing he said was, I think this marginalizes native Gaeltacht speakers themselves because their way of talking is not deemed worthy of being taught. This attitude that a native dialect is something that you can pick up later later on if you want to makes it seem like Gaeltacht to Irish is somehow less important and merely an optional sort of afterthought. That's how it comes across to me anyway. <laughs> I don't know where to start with that one really. To say that we're marginalizing native Gaeltacht speakers by offering a language course online. I mean we're just helping people learn Irish. We're helping people learn Irish who would maybe never have been able to learn Irish otherwise. People who don't have any Irish language classes around them or there's no native speakers around them to learn from and it's quite frustrating. If you're all on your own and you're trying to learn to speak a language you need all the resources you can get. So to say that we marginalize native Gaeltic speakers, I'd find it hard to believe if we're hurting some native speakers in the Uh Moreover, just to uh, go over the point, what we do in Bite Size Irish Gaelic is we try to teach you the standardized form of Irish. So Irish has a written standardized form. It's an agreed official form of the Irish language. Quite strangely, the standardized form of Irish does not have a standardized pronunciation. So it's written down and different people will pronounce it differently depending on where they're from, basically. So you basically need to lean towards a dialect in one way or another. Or use kind of school Irish, as it said. School Irish is really a dialectless form of Irish, which... <laughs> It doesn't always match very closely with native speakers of the Irish language. So what we've done is my accent leans towards Munster Irish, although I don't have a traditional Munster Irish accent that they would have down in Kerry, for example. I grew up in Munster in Clare, which is not a Gwaeltacht region. So we tried to cover standardized Irish where possible, but we do point out different expressions for the different dialects. So we have uh, different expressions, for example, on saying, how are you, just for example. Because it's always good to expose yourself still to the different ways of saying different things. Another part of the forum thread was Dahi Makyala said, I haven't heard Owen's accent, but in general, if you were brought up speaking a language at a young age, you are a native speaker of it. Even if it just so happens that it is a dialect more influenced by English than many others. I hear young people here in the Gaeltacht, so obviously Dahi lives in the Gaeltacht, and they're employing varying degrees of school Irish alongside the more traditional Munster dialects of their parents. I'd imagine uh, they would take umbrage at any suggestions of them not being native speakers. So what Dahi is saying is, there are young native speakers in Munster who are using a form of the Irish language 
that differs to how their parents used to speak. And the very same thing is happening to English in Ireland. The English language in Ireland is changing over time. Dare I say, some dialects sound like they're the local dialect of California. Although I don't think uh, California is a local county in Ireland. And finally, I'll mention Pat Hagen's uh, Hibernian Roots uh, contribution to the thread. Pat said, I've enjoyed using Owen's program and listening to his accompanying audio files. One of the features I like most about it is the way Owen will slowly pronounce the more common and maybe not so common words and phrases so that one can relate what he or she is reading to what he or she is hearing. I do have other materials such as Buntu's Kainte and certainly I've benefited from it but because it speeds along at normal conversational speed it's difficult to follow along and uh, some of the more subtle nuances are missed. In my very limited experience, I say bite-sized Irish Gaelic is certainly a great addition, if not the primary element to a collection of various learning materials. And Pat adds more to that uh, forum thread, so you should read along. Let me leave you uh, with this question, right? Native English language speakers in Ireland Their accent, as we might call it, Hiberno-English. What I'm speaking right now, there's a lot of kind of terms of phrases. We have a certain accent and accents vary according to the region where you come from in Ireland. Guess what? Most people in Ireland are native English speakers. I don't think anyone can really argue with that fact, right? So the English that is spoken in Ireland is very heavily influenced by the Irish language, Irish Gaelic. If you go to Kerry, right? If you go along the west coast of Kerry, walk into a pub and listen to the old men at the bar. A lot of it, if they're speaking English, it will sound very much like Irish. And you know the reason is? Because it is so influenced by the Irish language that came before it in those regions. And now that's how people speak their English. And to be honest, the English in Ireland, the accent of English seems to be kind of flattening over time as people watch more and more, you know, TVs and films, movies and listen to the national radio and all that stuff. Over time, it it flattens and averages out. To say that they're not native speakers of English, I think it's just ludicrous. Simply because their English language is influenced by another language, which happens to be the Irish language, right? And the very same is happening to the native Irish speakers in Ireland. There's a lot of influence from English. There's no doubt about it um, on the Irish language. And things change over time. People grew up in different regions of Ireland. Would you prefer that I just speak English? Or would you prefer that I speak my native Irish that I grew up with? More heavily influenced by English by than compared to a native speaker living in the heart of the Gaeltacht. It's only natural, you pick up some terms of phrase, you pick up ways of saying things, you pick up a certain accent, and you go with it. And the very same thing, as I said, happens in the English language, and it's happened for, what, the past 150, many more years in Ireland, that the English language is being formed and being influenced by the Irish language. And to say that speakers of either of those languages who grew up with that language as their first language, and to say that they're not native speakers, that's simply ludicrous, right? And I'm going to leave it at that. If you want to leave comments on all that I've had to say, please, please, please leave a comment on the show notes page of this blog. So the link to that is www.bitesizeirishgaelic.com forward slash podcast and find episode 17. If you have comments or listener questions on the Irish language, where to visit, how to learn something, you can email me, Owen, directly at podcast at bitesizeirishgaelic.com. Thanks to Tsukumo for their music, which you hear on this episode under a Creative Commons license. And until the next episode, Slán Gafol. Bye for now.